There was a time when most people in Georgia lived on farms, and life on the farm was hard work from sun up to sundown. And everyone in the family pitched in, including the children. Actually, that's not very different from farm life today. Oh, 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 oh. Coming now. Twelve year old Dusty Dunn works on the family farm with his father and grandfather. With animals and crops to take care of, there's always work to do, and Dusty's expected to do his share. I don't come and help after during the week, I mean, after school, because my, um, I don't really have time to have all my homework. But usually I come down here and help on Saturday and Sundays and during the holidays and summertime. How many is that here, Dan? I think it's 38, Dusty. <laughs> Whenever Dusty isn't in school or doing his homework, He's involved in some part of the farm. His father likes the time they spend working together. A lot of times that gives me more time with our son during the summer and to have a little more, a better relationship with him. Good to go and put him down. Plus he's, he's contributing, helping to pay his own way also. So it's very important. When I was about nine or ten, I started driving a tractor, and I could barely reach the pedal, so I'd have to sit on the edge of the seat to reach the clutch and the, uh, the brakes. But after a while, I grew, and finally, I can sit in the back, sit back and relax in the seat now. First thing I ever did when I drove a tractor, I drove it in the tobacco field. First thing I ever did, a tobacco driver. He left and he got sick. Daddy said, you got to go out there and drive the tractor. I said, well, I don't know how. He said, I'll show you. He put me on the tractor and I had to come out here and drive for the rest of the afternoon. That first day I learned how to drive a tractor and I got home and I ran in the house and told my mama, I know how to drive a tractor and I know how to drive a tractor. My mom, my mom kind of got mad at my dad because she didn't want me driving a tractor at that age. She, she was afraid I might wreck or get hurt. So but finally she said, finally she was happy for me and she gave me a hug and she said, I'm so proud of you and you know, but that was most the happiest time when I finally learned how to drive a tractor because I always wanted to. But no matter how much Dusty likes driving a tractor, it's still work. I don't see how my granddaddy did it back when there wasn't this technology and they had to do it with mules. I, I gotta hand it to him. If he could do it, he did it a good job because I couldn't do it. I know I couldn't do it. Dusty's grandfather remembers when plowing meant hitching up an ox or a mule, when horsepower had a different meaning than it does today. Then as now, farm kids had their work to do. Young people today can get an idea of what farm life was like by visiting the Georgia Agorama in Tifton. It's like entering a time warp, dressing like farm kids did 80 years ago and doing their chores. Feeding the animals meant shucking dried corn and putting the ears of corn through a mechanical device to shell it or take the kernels off the cob. Then it was ready to feed to the hogs or the mules. In the early part of the century, farmers grew their own corn for animal feed. They didn't buy feed like today. If you needed water for the animals, or washing dishes or taking a bath, you went to the well. Watch them now, son, until I get her back out there, OK? Now, that's good. Whoa. 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 Going somewhere meant catching a mule that didn't necessarily want to be caught. Whoop, 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 whoop. Put her bits in the mouth. Make her open her mouth up there. Then you had to put on the harness. See there? Okay, now put the ears in. Okay, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, girl. After the mule is harnessed, you had to hitch it to the wagon. We are now got our mule hooked up and ready to go. Whoa. Finally, you could set out for your destination. And if it wasn't too far away, you might get there before dark. Agriculture has always been important to the Georgia economy, particularly at the, around the turn of the century in the early portion. Up to 88% of actual, the actual population lived and worked on a farm. And that's one of the reasons the school calendars, even today, reflect the agricultural calendar when you have spring breaks. 
Uh, and that was the purpose of these breaks and summer breaks and all, so they could go and do the necessary work that they had to do to survive on their own, own farm. The girls ever plow? Yes, ma'am. The ladies plow just like the men folks right along with them every day. Doing great. Since nothing was mechanized, no tractors, no cars, no machines to do the work, it took a lot of hands to keep a farm going. The ideal farm family was big because the need for labor. And what better labor source than your own children? Uh, free. <laughs> so uh, that provided them a lot of, uh, of labor that was needed for just the day-to-day -day activities, uh, plowing the fields, cooking in the kitchen, tending animals. Cooking was done on a wood stove, which could really heat up the kitchen in the summer. Remember, there was no air conditioning back then. Well, the days of wood stoves and mule-drawn plows are long gone, and the rhythm of life has changed as well. Well, today is it's a lot, lot easier because all you have to do is just get in the car and go. And back then, you had to uh, get the animals ready, get hooked up to the wagon, and that takes about half an hour, hour to do. So you're trying to say it's pretty inconvenient. I praise the Lord that we have running water because it is too much trouble just to draw water for cooking and then taking a bath and stuff. It's just too much trouble. I think it was great they got to stay outside so much because now we all sit inside in front of the TV and, and just stay inside instead of go outside and enjoy the nice days we have. Because of machines like tractors, it takes fewer people to work larger and larger farms. Once almost 90% of Georgia's people lived on farms, today it's less than 2%. The day of the small family farm is passing into history.